ABC. Welcome back to the AMA Chevy Trucks U.S. Motocross Championship from Southwick, Massachusetts. Todd Harris along with the champ David Bailey. And before we release the hounds from moto number two, let's check in with Cameron Steele who has a report on Ryan Hughes. Well, guys, we're getting set for moto number two in the 125s. And in moto number one, we all wondered what was up with Ryan Hughes. He actually broke his ankle at lap number four right around there. So the number 105 KTM Red Bull bike coming to the line with tape all over his boot trying to support the situation. A broken fibula down by the ankle. We're not sure how it's going to go, but being the tough guy that he is, he's down here getting ready to race. This is amazing. I've seen Ryan ride with a broken jaw, but I've broken my fibula, and it's the most painful bone you can break in your leg. It's not weight-bearing, but it still hurts like a mother. And This is what we think may have happened. Or he may have got his foot into the ground and it came up and hit the swing arm. He looks down like, what is going on with my leg? Where's all this pain coming from? This is after the race. He's lifting it up. I went over and visited him between motos. He had it in the ice cooler and up elevated. He skipped a warm-up lap and he's going to give it a go. And I've never seen toughness like this, Todd. Well, two healthy legs are a challenge here. It's now time for the Sobe Suzuki fast lap. All right, kids, put down the Harry the Bear book. It's time for the best part of the Outdoor National Circuit. Well, actually, my favorite part, the Sobe Suzuki Fast Lap, where I take the bike out, and I put a camera on my helmet, and I go out and show you guys what the track looks like in layman's terms. What does that mean? That means I'm not as fast as the pro, so take it easy on me. Don't throw rocks. Let's go check out the sand at Southwick. We get started off the asphalt into an uphill starting straight, a hard right turn, and then into tons of whoops, a long straightaway. Take you back into the sweeper, first sweeper of the section, and then you're going to get into a hard left, hard right, and into the next tabletop. Downhill after the tabletop. I like the inside line. You can see it's already getting low me on the gas, sliding out. Left hand turn real quick. This is going to send you up to the old finish line jump. A little air time. Then pick a line. They'll get rough. Inside line here. A little bump over the top. You can see the water on the track from the rainy, but I think the lines will get good. And this is traditionally the deepest, deepest corner. I can't even pick the line and then up into a left. Out of the left, you have the choice. Do you do the double jump? There's not really a lift. Guys will be hitting it, though. Then a right hand uphill sweeper over a hill. Left hand turn tabletop over a gap jump. And then you're headed towards the new section. Over this hill takes you into the new section. It's a downhill, lots of brakey bumps. You're going to have to get a line and stick it, get on the gas fast, and then a sweeper left-hander. There's going to be multiple lines here, but you want to not get checked. And this, uh, you've got to get on the gas. you got to try to hold your line. This is the finish line jump, but we're going to keep on going into this right-hand turn and take you a little farther. You've seen the checkers, but there's a step-down jump and then a left-hand turn that goes away from you. Lots of braking bumps coming into the small jump up the hill past the mechanics, and then a right-hand turn takes you back on the track, and that's your Sobe Suzuki Fast Lap. All right, thank you very much, Cameron. There you see the excessive tape on the leg of Ryan Hughes trying to support that leg from Cameron's report. A broken bone, David, and this is going to be brutal if we take a look at the Suzuki grid, the starting grid. Well, Ryan Mills up there, Craig Anderson. <laughs> I mean, for these guys to be in the top three in that first moto, people must be listening to this on the internet and looking at the results later on and going, what? Where was everybody? But these guys deserved it. They, like I said, it came down to the start. They got great starts. Brown and Ryan start together a lot of times this year, and it's going to be tough for Ryan Hughes to shift with that left foot. 30 board is sideways. Moto number two from Southwick is off, and Ryan Hughes already finding himself in the traffic. Well, the big jam up in the first moto wasn't quite as bad. This time, everybody gets to their claim, and not a very good start for Brown or Ryan Hughes. And once again, it's 109. Craig Anderson on board the Yamaha out in front. Anderson got a second in moto number one, and Brock Seller sits right behind him. So it's the Yamaha's one and two as we start things off moto number two. Michael Byrne working his way up into third. So here we go. This is the overall. It's between the Sellers was ninth in the first moto, I believe. So now it's just if Burn can get around Sellers, he's going to make it a little tougher to try to help his teammate Yamaha Troy try to get an overall win. Who would have picked? I don't think Anderson would have picked himself to win this race. I mean, he probably would have been like, you know, if I get the top five both motos, that would be great. But he's in a position here with Ryan Hughes and having the problems he's having. Brown way 
way back in the pack. He can pick up the overall today. Well, the start has certainly been key for Anderson, Brown, and the rest of them. But Craig Anderson is absolutely putting on a clinic. For more on that, let's check in with Cameron Steele about the start. Well, a great start again in motor number two. You got to be happy with that. Yeah, that's great. He told me again he's going to do the same thing as moto number one. And he told Brock, too, he said, do that third gear start. It's going to work good. And they both up front. I'm interested to know. I'm not sure how Brock finished in motor number one, but will he try to pass Craig or are they going to work together? I'm sure Brock was. He's got the chance. I'm sure he was. But I hope it stays like that. That'd be great for you. We'll see how it works out. Thanks. Usually a third gear start is a little much because it's, it gets so much wheel spin. And just from grabbing the bow, Anderson gets a little wash out there. But usually just from grabbing the throttle, the stand is falling off your bike. That's why the mechanics are down there with rags trying to get every last little bit of stand out of there. And, you know, it's, it's amazing what these guys are able to do on these 250s. Brock Sellers is known for running fifth gear through the move section of Supercross. And the third gear start, which rarely works that well, to get to slip the clutch so long, really panned out for these guys. And that's, in fact, what they did to the front wheel pushing. You know, you, you, everything's cruising along. You're like, man, it's blowing. It's all going good. Whoa! And then that comes up and he grabs it once or twice a lap. You have to expect that stuff when you come here to South Union to be physically ready to race on something that's going to punish you if you're not totally ready. Brown just... He doesn't care about Shane Best. Get out of the way. He's trying to get to the front, take advantage of Brian Houston's problem, get the point lead back. Mike Brown, number three, who had an atrocious start and finish in the first moto, going 22nd for him. It's, I guess, an improvement. He's close to the top 10 now. Well, that's great, but he really needs a moto win to make up for that beautiful first moto. Ryan Hughes, you know, in places I'm watching where it's really tough, Physically, it doesn't look like he has a broken leg, so he is toughing it out, not feeling the pain enough to really show for the rest of us. The mechanic feeling the pain for him. Chad Reed cheering on his fellow mates. Craig Anderson, your leader. Brock Sellards in second.